Hi friends, in today's video, we are taking a look at the newly released Vogue and Simplicity Fall Collection of 2023. So it's been a while since I've done one of these impression videos. So really excited today to share with you my thoughts of the collection. And hopefully I'll be able to hear your thoughts in the comment section below as well. Let me know what you thought of the, these two collections and if you will be purchasing anything from any one of these collections and if so what would you be doing so let's go ahead get into today's video we're going to first start with the vogue collection and then i will share with you um, all the patterns that the vogue collection just newly released i'll put images up here and then also um, we'll go from that point and start with the simplicity collection as well now i will say from the start of the video i usually don't include uh, children or costume patterns uh, because I don't sew with those patterns very often and so I'm just going to stick with what I know. So let's go ahead and start with the Vogue V 1974 pants. So the description reads that this is a bell bottom pants that sit one inch below the waistline. You have a fly front zipper, slanted pockets, back darks, bias hem facing and you have a stitched hem so the pattern is rated that it's figure flattering for everyone and also average now i will say from the very start of the video i didn't see many in this collection that i actually would purchase i did see one that i would buy if i had not had a similar pattern but i didn't see anything that i actually wanted so um, these bell bottom pants um, is in that, you know, patterns I would not buy. Uh, for some reason, they are very trendy. These 1970, 80 bell bottom pants have been really trending over the last couple of years. Um, I have seen a few simplicity patterns, McCall patterns. I believe Mimi G has a similar pattern that came out two years ago. In fact, it's in the 8655 pattern with that wrap that I love. So I absolutely love the uh, wrap tie of that pattern. It's not a tie. It's a, um, a short um, duster of some kind. And you have ties that you tie in the front. They're really long ties. Um, so it's not like a tie knot shirt, but it is a duster with ties at the lower edge. And I love that. Um, but she has a pair of bell bottoms in that collection as well. And there's just so many different patterns that have come out over the last couple of years that mimic this. And then I also know designers are actually on this trend as well. So um, I saw a pair of St. Lauren, Lawrence um, pair of bell bottom pants that is, um, I think like $6,000 or something like that. I'll put the image here so you can see what it looks like. A pair of um, real leather uh, bell bottom pants that is exactly like this pattern here. Now, if you notice, um, I'll put the style lines here, but at the um, knee there, you are attaching that bell pattern to the pants. So the pants are uh, separate from that little bell and you're actually attaching it to it. So you will have a stitching line going around that lower knee area there or um, at the knee. Uh, I just don't like the style for me personally. Um, I think the pair in the leather looks kind of good and trendy after seeing the St. Lawrence ones. But again, I'm not paying $6,000 for a pair of pants. The McCall's M7690 is one of them. It came out a few years ago. So we've seen something similar like this before. And again, I'll put that pattern here so you can see what it looks like. It's almost identical. You do have different variations in this McCall's pattern, but view D, that's the pattern that's identical to this Vogue pattern. So if you have that pattern, you don't necessarily have to get the Vogue pattern. Next, we have this Mrs. Knit dress that has like this asymmetrical side um, ruching going on here. So the description reads that it's a close fitting knit dress that has an asymmetrical neckline, gathers invisible side seam zipper, long or short sleeves and stitched hems. View A dress is mid length and view B is a calf length. 
um, it looks almost like a maxi on the model there. But again, it's just not my cup of tea. You do have the um, cutout on the shoulder there. So one shoulder has like a cutout which I did not see that mentioned in the description, but you do have that cut out there. And it's just not a pattern that I actually would like to wear or that I would like to make. So not really my cup of tea either. Then we have this Vogue V1971, which is um, a Mrs. Coat in five different lengths. I don't know why we have the five different lengths here, but the description says that this is a lined fitted coat that has a double breasted button or snap closing princess seams and shoulder pads. View A has a contrast upper collar and view E a contrast fake faux, a fake fur upper collar. And it's rated for easy and uh, figure flattering for everyone. Now, um, some of these patterns, I don't know why they rate them as easy because some people would think that easy also means quick and also beginner or advanced beginner. I wouldn't say that this is an advanced beginner, maybe someone who is at the later stage of the advanced beginner stage and moving into the intermediate stage. But I mean, you have a lot of details here, including, you know, your princess themes, for the front and the back, you have buttons that you're attaching, a collar that you're attaching, the uh, garment is lined. And so I don't think this is going to be easy and I don't think it's going to be quick. It's just my opinion and um, the uh, experience I have sewing some Vogue patterns is just, it's. I don't think this is going to be easy at all uh, for beginners or advanced beginners. If you're in the advanced beginner stage, maybe this will be a breeze for you, but I don't think this is going to be really quick or easy. It's going to take some time. Now, I do like the classic fit and, fit and flare uh, look. It's almost kind of like a 19, um, a vintage style uh, classic coat. I'll put a few images here so you can see like um, the, the, the style lines of that era. I did see one coat similar to this recently on Saxon Fifth. Um, and so this is a trendy thing right now. I believe that coat uh, retailed for like $1,000, um, but it's now on sale for like $300. And so it is an older, I think, from last season. However, they still have this. And so I think that the designers for this boat pattern is probably getting some of those styles from, uh, you know, higher end styles. Uh, designers and clothing stores like Saks and Fifth. So I do like it, like I said, but I have a similar coat in my stash already. It's a butterick pattern that I purchased years ago, uh, but that one has a, a collar. It's a different type of collar. So I do like that style, but again, I, I have something like this similar in my stash, so I won't be picking that one up. Now this Next pattern, the Vogue V1973. So you would notice that in the first pattern that we saw, which is the Vogue V1974, the pair of pants, you'll see that the models are wearing um, these beautiful pussy bow uh, tops. And so we do get the top for that, but it's not in the same envelope. So this is the Vogue V1973. Now I will say this is a style that I do like and I can get behind. However, I have a few pussy bow blouses in my stash, including butterick patterns, as well as um, a, a pattern by um, uh, Sew Over It. So it's the pussy bow blouse by Sew Over It. It's called the pussy bow blouse. And so, uh, but that pattern, the sleeve pattern, I'm going to be honest, I did not like the sleeve pattern in the Sew so Over It, uh, but the actual style, the neckline and everything was really great, but the sleeve pattern needed a lot of work. And so I didn't really like that one so much. And so if I were to get another one, uh, this Vogue pattern would be a pattern that I actually would get. The only thing that I am um, 
nervous about and I'm very cautious about with commercial patterns is the sleeve pattern. The sleeve pattern is usually very narrow for someone like me. And so getting the right uh, size for my body as well as my sleeves tend to be a little bit of a challenge. And as you know, when you're doing bicep adjustments, you can only include so much extra um, you know, ease into that pattern before the shape and the style of the sleeve is no longer the original style. So you have to be careful with bicep adjustments. And that's usually my issue with um, these types of garments. I usually have to include a lot um, into my bicep adjustment and the, it ends up changing the nature and design of the pattern. And so I would consider getting this uh, to replace the pussy bow blouse because I didn't really enjoy the pussy bow blouse as much as I thought I would. And just to see what the sleeve is like. Uh, however, don't quote me on that. I may or may not get it. I might stick with my butterick pattern. I haven't tried the butterick pattern yet, but I think I will do that pretty soon. Now, the description for this says that it is a semi fitted blouse that has a collar that extends into the tie ends. Concealed front button closure, long satin sleeves with continuous lap, button cuffs, and stitched hems. View, view A has a tapered sleeve, and view B has a bishop sleeve with gathers at the lower edge. And this is rated as average and also figure flattering for everyone. So, like, even a top like this that has, you know, concealed buttons. Um, a continuous lap, things of that nature is rated as average. Whereas we saw with the line coat, it was rated as easy. Uh, again, uh, you really have to be careful when selecting these patterns. Make sure that you check the details. Make sure you open up the instructions because you can open up the instructions when you're in the store and look at the instructions and see if the instructions are uh, ones that you can actually get through and get through with ease. Um, and if there are steps missing or anything like that, that you would pos possibly need because um, sometimes they rate these as easy or average and it just may not be for you. Um, so with that said, I do like this pattern. However, I don't know if I'm going to pick it up. I do like the fact that it has a concealed button closure and I don't have a top like that. And so I would consider getting it again for that as well. Next, we have the Vogue V1969. This is another Mrs. Knit dress that is a close fitting, almost like a bodycon type dress uh, with a cutout, a shoulder cutout um, on the, I believe that's the right side of the body. Uh, let's go ahead and read the description. Close fitting dress with cutout shoulder design has underbust and princess seams with top stitching detail inside visible, invisible uh, side seam zipper, back vent, and stitched hems. V view A has a crew neck and short sleeves, and view B has a turtleneck and long sleeves. And this is uh, figure flattering for your hourglass, your inverted triangle, and triangle shapes. And um, yeah, I won't be getting this one either. Um, it's no secret for those of you who have been following me for a while, cutouts are just not my thing. Um, the most I will do in a cutout is maybe a keyhole opening in the back or maybe a slightly low V neckline or something like that, or maybe a keyhole in the front. But again, um, it's going to be a very high key line, keyhole line where I'm not showing any cleavage or anything like that. Next, we have this Marcy Tilton pattern. It's the Vogue V1970. I'm going to have to be honest, I don't think I like this one very much as well. Now, this one you, you do have, um, it's a jacket and a vest, and the description says it's a semi-fitted vest and jacket with front button closure, princess seam details, side seam pockets, bias hem facings, length and collar variations, and uh, view A has bias armhole facing. So that's for your vest. And view B has seven, eight, seven inch length sleeves with a contrast vest, a, a contrast facing. And the vest is designed to layer under the jacket. So you do have um, this rating as average, and then it is figure flattering for everyone. I'm not quite for certain about this pattern. Um, maybe 
the red and black version that the model is wearing. Maybe that view, um, but I don't know. Again, I would definitely have to, this is one of those patterns you have to choose your fabric wisely, try to figure out what type of fabric and what kind of style you want for this. I wouldn't absolutely say no to this one, but I would have to definitely think really long and hard about the choice of fabric for that one. Mrs. Jacket Vogue 1972 is a semi-fitted line jacket that has a shawl collar, princess seam, slightly extended shoulders with shoulder pads, front pocket, side panels, no side seams, and long two-piece sleeves with a buttoned vent. Rated for average and figure flattering for everyone. Um, we've seen jackets like this. I think it's nice that they have jackets like this come out every so often in these collections um, so that, you know, when the ones that are no longer in print um, are not accessible, we can have access to um, some of these. However, again, very slim fitting sleeve for someone like me. I don't know how they're saying this is going to be figure flattering for my body type, um, especially for my arms. I just don't see it. I don't see that this would be a, you know, jacket that would be figure flattering for me. I would say more like more of the like blazers that are kind of looser and fit um, and don't have you know, too much of a slim fitting arm there would be someone for my type of figure that, which is the inverted triangles. I'm bigger on top than I am on the bottom. And so I don't think this would be very figure flattering for me, especially because I don't have any <laughs> hips. And so if I wear a pencil skirt or a pair of slim fitting jeans with this, it's just not going to have a good look in my opinion. So next is the Vogue V 1975 which is a Mrs. Knit jacket with a belt, top, and pants. This is a very comfy set. I don't know what was going on in the design process for the hooded top. I don't know. But I think views B and C are really fun, maybe cute for lounging around the house, or even, you know, if you just want to have a loungy type uh, set for, you know, non-casual events. So I think that would be really fun to wear. Uh, the description says loose fitting jacket that has a drop shoulder, lined hood, front facing, side seam pockets, belt with carriers, and stitch hem. Top has neck band and side slits, pull on elastic waist pants, have drawstring and side seam pockets, and shaped leg opening with stitched hem easy and figure flattering for everyone. So I would say this is something that is going to be easy. I think that classification is um, pretty spot on there, especially for views B and C. For view C, I'm not quite for certain about that hood. It's just not working for me. But again, if you want something that's um, easy to sew, easy to throw on, worry-free. I think views B and C would be really good for that. Um, now we have the Vogue V 1967. Now I get really excited when I see dresses in collections because I love making dresses. I think among all of the garments that I sew, I think I sew dresses the most. And also I love dresses. So because of it, and because I have so many dresses in my wardrobe now that are me made, I've decided to uh, turn my hand more towards tops. And so I've been making tops for the last couple of weeks like crazy. And so you'll see pretty soon I have a lot of tops. You'll see a lot of the reviews for those. Um, but to the point of the dresses, I love seeing dresses in the collection. And so sometimes I'm disappointed when some of the dresses don't turn out how I would like them to, or something that I would buy, I would say. Um, so this one is by Rachel Comey, and I wouldn't necessarily say no to this, um, but I might do a few alterations to the neckline. I think a, a higher neckline in the front would probably be better for someone like me, maybe even play with the neckline a little bit and make it a little bit uh, more rounded. 
not completely rounded, but maybe maybe a softer V, a higher neck and a softer V would probably look um, well for me. I think I do like the back there. The back um, has this waistline that's in a V shape, which is really fun and cute, I think. So yeah, I think this is a decent pattern and I would probably consider buying it for a, um, you know, maybe an event like church or something like that. Um, so this description says line fit and flare dress in mid length that has open neckline with a draped detailing, three quarter length sleeves, stitched hems, back invisible zipper and uh, it is average and figure flattering for your hourglass, inverted triangle, and triangle shapes. So yeah, I definitely would say, especially for someone like me, you definitely need that fit and flair so that you look more ba balanced if you're inverted triangle. So I do love fit and flair dresses. And I think that's one of the reasons why I love dresses so much because they're more figure flattering on me. So next we have uh, a men's coat in two different lengths and the description reads that it is loose fitting line coat with wide peak lapels that extends to shoulder and shoulder pads, uh, welt pockets, back vent, two piece sleeves with button vents and top stitching and it's rated for average and for everyone. So I do like this and I'm really excited that they have this for men. We don't have a lot of coat for a lot of coats for men, so I'm really excited for this pattern for men. Um, the only thing that I would suggest is so they have a long length that's like a knee length, and then a really long trench coat length. There's no shorter length, so hopefully they have a uh, um, short and length in line for the midi one so that way people can raise it up if they want to have it more like hit around the high hip area instead of you know lower um almost near the knee there so yeah that's a really nice one and that is our vote collection and yeah you all let me know in the comment section below what you thought of the vote collection but let's go ahead and switch over and let's look at the simplicity collection so for the simplicity collection let's go ahead and start with the simplicity s a 9821 which is a mrs blouse with collar sleeve and hem variations the description reads that it is a sophisticated silhouette with corseted waist detailing um, the shirt has a front button closure, collar and collar band options, long sleeves with the cuff or sleeveless and hem variations. View B has a contrast bodice. View A and C has pin tucked bodice. I, I don't like this pattern <laughs> at all. Um, I feel like there is a lot going on. You do have some really great detailing, but I think that because you have so much going on in one pattern, it's very, um, in my opinion, it's not balanced. So we have, um, first of all, we have a button up top that have a corset. That's something that's new. I think maybe we could have stopped there. Um, this peplum style that's at the bottom of the pin tucked top is just throwing me off i don't know exactly why but it looks very unbalanced to me i think if you if you cover your hand over the picture so i'm covering my hand over the picture here if you cover your ha hand over the picture of the model you can see that the top without the without the hem i think looks very good so for view c it's almost there, it's close, but you still have like this little ruffle at the bottom. So I think if you extend the corseted top um, to be worn like maybe at the high hip area, it will be a pretty decent top. But with the peplums on the bottom, I think it's too much of, it's just too much with the pattern. So I do like um, it without the peplum if there's a way to extend the length of the corseted 
part of the bodice and just leave it like that with the buttons on the top, I think would be absolutely gorgeous. Um, the other thing, uh, the, the sleeve here, the area of the sleeve, it has like this raglan dolman type drop sleeve thing going on. I'm not quite for certain about the add-on sleeve with it. Um, it's an interesting pattern. I feel like it's very unique. I haven't seen anything like this um, that I'm thinking of in terms of designer, you know, high-end designer fashion. So I don't know exactly where this design is coming from. I think it's very unique, like I said. However, I would make tweaks with it if I were to buy it and make it look a little bit um, so that you don't have too many details in one garment. But those are my thoughts on that. All right, so Simplicity S9825 is a Mrs. Jacket. Now, this reminds me of several of the Mrs. Jackets that we've seen in the past from Simplicity as well as McCall's. I think they might just be entering this in so that they can phase some of the old ones out. Um, but this is a double-breasted lined jacket with shoulder pads and optional contrast lapel or front patch pockets with flaps and it's rated for average and you can get this one in paper and pdf copy as well uh, next we have the simplicity s9828 which is a unisex a unisex sweatshirt and pants you can get this in pdf and paper and it is um described as having a front half zip sweatshirt that has Drop shoulders, long elasticized, uh, long elasticized sleeves, elastic cord at the waist and front pockets with contrast flap. Pull-on track pants have tie and cord and elastic at the waist and the hem. Um, plus, you have two cargo pockets with a zipper and is rated for average. Um... I'm not much for track suits or fleece type garments, or I just don't wear them very often, so I don't make them. So, but having that said, this is your classic, you know, fleece type uh, unisex sweatshirt and pants. And if you don't have any of these types of patterns, or if you don't have patterns like this in your stash, it would be easy to go and get this one. I think it would be fun. Um, it is rated as average. And so for those of you who are, you know, at that, uh, that stage where you're sewing average patterns, this would be fun for you. Next, we have something similar. Now I was very, um, I, I don't know. I was like, why would they come out with this when in the previous pattern, we see something similar. So I don't know why they have this pattern. It's the Simplicity S9829. Again, very similar to the previous pattern. And if you wanted different details, you can definitely add them with the previous pattern. Uh, so this one says, easy to sew, half zip hoodie and men's sizes small to 2XL and has front kangaroo pockets with flap that continues around the band around the back, sorry, elastic and contrast at the sleeve and hem band. And it's rated as easy. So again, I think it's very similar to the one in the previous pattern. So mm, if you get the unisex one, you might not need to get the men's hoodie. So the next pattern, Simplicity S9826. So you can get this in your regular sizes as well as your plus sizes. So the plus size is S9827. So you have two different patterns there. Uh, so you can get this in paper or PDF. So Mrs. Pa uh, pants in two lengths and a camisole and a cardigan. So I really like um, the cardigan that's added with this as well as the pants. I think I have similar pants to this as well as a cardigan. And so I can definitely sew those two and kind of get the same look. However, if you don't have a pattern like this, it will be easy for you to pick this one up. And it, I think it's really nice. I think it's a great fall pattern. So it is um, pleated wide leg pants in two lengths, have wide waistband and belt loops with top stitching. 
side pockets and a back welt pocket. Complete the look with a camisole and a, a short three button cardigan with a V neckline and patch pockets and is rated for average. So I think the fact that you only sewing three buttons or sewing three buttonholes, that would probably be really easy for beginners, not beginners, sorry, advanced beginners. Uh, if you're entering into that stage where you're playing with buttonholes, uh, that would be something that would be, um, you know, right up your alley because you can practice on this, right? So really fun and cute. Next is the Simplicity S 9823, which is an easy to sew pair of pants, uh, Mrs. Pants. You can get this in paper and PDF copy. It says create these easy to sew Mrs. Pants and two lengths. Pants have front pleats, back darts, belt carriers, front pockets, front seam details, shape flap at the center front, a zipper and button closure, and view A has front slits on um, the leg. So yeah, they're writing this as easy. There's quite a lot going on. And like I said, with one of the patterns in the Vogue collection, just because it's titled as easy doesn't mean it's going to be quick and it may it might not necessarily be easy for beginners and advanced beginners. It might be more easier for your intermediate and advanced sewers. So with that said, um, it's an interesting pattern. I'm not really one for like these uh, details that are on the waistline, like these little ties and these knots and you know, I, I just don't really like to draw too much attention to that area. And so, again, not something that I would be um, looking to buy. And then we have the Simplicity S 9820, which is a Mrs. Knit dress and a shrug. Again, we have kind of like these cutouts, these asymmetrical looks, um, bodycon type dress, something that, again, I'm not interested in. However, very on trend. Um, this is a semi-fitted dress in two lengths. It's slightly flared at the hem and has back and invisible zipper closure. Uh, view A is a midi-length dress with uh, draped off the shoulder neckline. View B is a strapless long-length dress. And the shrug has a center front knot with a pull through the tie. And it is titled as easy as well. And I would say maybe view B where you don't have the knots and you don't have the ties and all that stuff um, would probably be a good choice for your beginners. Um, it'll be straight and, you know, just simple, easy to get through. It looks like you may only have two pattern pieces there, your front and your back. So that would be a pattern that I would definitely say would be easier for your beginners. Now let's look at this last pattern. This is the Simplicity S 9824. This is the Mimi G coat and you can get this in paper and PDF copy. And the description reads that it's a relaxed oversized coat in two different lengths that have a drop shoulder, a, sha a shaped lapel, seven eighth length sleeves with bands at the hem, patch pockets with a flap and button closure and it's rated for your average uh, sewist. So that's going to be your intermediate to advanced sewist. Um, I do like the coat. It does remind me of a new look pattern, but that new look pattern I made a couple years ago did not have buttons on the front and it didn't have these uh, breast pockets and lower pockets on the front. So this one is a little bit more advanced than the uh, new look pattern that I sewed a couple years ago. And I did like that style. It was very fun, easy to throw on. This would be something I would consider getting. However, um, it looks very hot right now. We've had uh, huge heat waves throughout the United States, especially in the region where I'm at. And uh, I think uh, Mimi G is now based in Atlanta or um, somewhere in that area. And it's been getting hot over there too. So I can only imagine maybe she um, took the pictures of these earlier on in the spring and then, you know, re released it later. I hope so because this looks very hot to me and I'm going to have to save this pattern for later. So if I decide to get this pattern, which I, I think I'm going to get it, um, I'll probably get it in the winter and maybe sew it in the winter. 
I probably would even lengthen the sleeve instead of having a 7 8 length sleeve. I would probably lengthen it so it's all the way at my wrist, which I think would um, be, uh, you know, warranted for the winter months. So, um, yeah, that is the uh, collection, the Simplicity Collection and the Vogue Collection. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you like this these two collections. And if you did, um, let me know what pattern is your favorite out of the collections or if you didn't like the collection at all go ahead and let us know in the comment in the comment section below and let us know if there are patterns that you were hoping to see for me personally i was hoping to see uh, more dresses uh more tops or you know something along those lines from the collection uh, more fall friendly type tops i think a lot in the vote collection especially like the long pussy bow blouse uh, those types of tops are uh, for more so later, the later in the fall and maybe even winter. Um, even the Marcy Tilton top that had the button up, um, uh, you had the vest and the jacket in that. That also, I feel like the vest maybe for fall because you can layer that and put a, um, a long sleeve shirt underneath that is maybe more like a voile or something like that, or, you know, a lighter weight type uh, material. So you can still have the vest as a style and wear the vest um, and still not be so hot with a, a top underneath that is more kind of like a voile or a lightweight cotton or something like that. Uh, the longer version of that, however, I would say later end of fall because it's very hot here. It's it's just, it has been very, very hot um, in most of the areas in the United States this year. And like I said, we've been hitting record high numbers for um, uh, high temps. So please make sure you stay hydrated, uh, keep cool, and try not to stay out in the heat too long, especially if um, you're working and things of that nature. If you don't have a choice, make sure you're using your sunblock. Uh, but yeah, it's just been very, very hot. So I, I've just been thinking um, some of these patterns, I mean, even the Mimi G um, boiler suit or the, um, you know, that jumper, again, that's later in a fall, I feel like. Um, the men's coat and the uh, Vogue collection, that's like later fall, early winter or even winter, depending on what type of material you use, those types of coats are usually for your wool and things of that nature. Um, I, I'm not seeing a whole lot that screams fall to me. Um, this Vogue uh, Mrs. Jacket with the long sleeves that look like it's going to be made with tweed and those types of fabrics. Again, later fall, um, this Mrs. Coat um, in five lengths, again, later in the fall or early part of winter. So these are the things that I've been thinking about while looking at this collection is, is this co collection really fall friendly or is it more winter friendly? I see a lot more geared towards winter than fall. And I was hoping to look for, I was hoping to see more, uh, top patterns that are maybe three quarter length sleeves that you can make with rayon type fabrics like rayon chali or um, maybe a, a poplin fabric or you know those type of friendly fall type fabrics that we usually use during this time or you know pants maybe palooza pants or things of that nature that we usually see around this time. And I just didn't see a lot of fall friendly things. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section below. Maybe we just need to get creative with a lot of these patterns and use different types of fabrics. I don't know. But again, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are for this collection. I can't wait to talk to you all in the next video. Thank you for sticking uh, by and as tuning into the channel today. I hope you all have a blessed and happy Zoe week and I will talk to you all in the next video. Bye.